What's going on sixpackabs.com? Today we are talking about fasting and its effect on a fatty liver, but also on the liver's ability to truly detox. I'm Thomas DeLauer and you've probably seen me before on YouTube or on Facebook talking about fasting, talking about detoxing, talking about all that stuff. And by the way, if you haven't already, I wanna make sure that you check out my science-based six-pack intermittent fasting program that's down there in the description. But anyway, today what I wanna talk about is specifically how fasting relates with the liver. So what we have to first understand is what happens when it comes down to toxin buildup in the first place? And what happens with a fatty liver in the first place? You see, what ends up happening is the liver goes through a process of, of course, detoxing. But whenever we have an influx of calories or an influx of even nutrients or an influx of toxins, the liver ultimately becomes a little bit sluggish. It has no choice to it. It has to get all this stuff processed, so it gets a little bit bogged down. So what ends up happening is when the liver is bogged down, the backup plan is for toxins to get stored in fat cells. And this is a pretty common thing. We always have toxins stored in our fat. But what ends up happening is during any kind of calorie surplus or any kind of fat accumulation, this is exacerbated. What happens is the liver ends up getting bombarded with signals from the white fat tissue communicating with the liver. So it looks something like this. You have a calorie surplus, which means you have more nutrients and more potential toxins and preservatives and things coming in. So the liver gets a little bit overwhelmed. Well, at the same time, your white adipose tissue, your fat tissue that's just your good old fashioned insulating fat tissue that's around your body, ends up accumulating more cells. Well, when that accumulates more cells, it sends signals to the liver, specifically inflammatory signals. So what this does is this triggers the liver to be on even more alert and it triggers it to go into even more of a toxic phase. So essentially what this means is you're bogged down at the liver level and at the fat cell level. This is extremely tough. So what ends up happening is the liver ultimately starts storing some of these carbohydrates that you consume and storing some of these other calories as fat. That's ultimately how a liver becomes fatty. It's when it's exposed to a lot of toxins and when it's exposed to a lot of sugars. Obviously, sugars are toxins in a lot of ways. So we're consuming this and the liver is turning into a fatty liver. So what ends up happening then is not only is your liver toxic, but the first place that the liver can ultimately put toxins is in the fat next to the liver. So not only do you have a fatty liver, you have a toxic fatty liver. So the fattier that your liver is, the more prone to toxin buildup that you already are, and the slower that your liver functions. So it's this vicious cycle once again. Now what we wanna look at is how fasting actually changes some of the genetics of the actual cells in your liver. So what we're talking about today is a study that was published in the journal EMBO of Molecular Medicine. This one was really interesting. It wanted to take a look at not just fasting, but specifically the stress that is induced on the liver when you're fasting. Yeah, that's right. Fasting induces stress in a good way. Okay, it is stressing the liver. When you have hunger signals, when you're hungry, you are basically putting yourself under a certain kind of stress. So in this case, the liver is exposed to stress and it triggers the release of something very specific that affects the genetics of the liver cells. It's called growth arrest DNA damaging inducible. It's a very ominous sounding name. And like the name implies, it basically stops the growth of certain parts of the liver. So it is a genetic compound. What that means is it affects the genetics or the gene expression of liver cells. So we're not just kind of artificially affecting the liver. We're actually going inside and changing the blueprint of how the liver really thinks, for lack of a better term. So by doing this, we change the liver's makeup and it starts changing its cells. So when we expose the liver to stress through fasting, this DNA damaging inducible elevates and it makes it so that the liver can repair better, but more importantly, it blocks the absorption of fatty acids into the liver. That sounds kind of complex, but basically what it means is it tells the liver to stop growing in a certain way and stop accepting fat. So the liver can actually stop becoming fatty and it can actually reverse itself. So fasting can reverse a fatty liver, not just through the reduction of calories, but actually through the effect of hunger signals and the stress on the liver changing the genetic makeup of the liver. So you're therefore reducing the fatty instances on your liver, which means that your liver can operate a little bit more cleanly with less toxin buildup, and therefore you end up with a more detoxified body. So that's step one. That's why I'm so big on detoxing the body through fasting. It's a quick way to incinerate those fat cells, but also change the genetic makeup so that you can get clean, get healthy, and feel good faster than ever. Now, if you have ideas for future videos on fasting, you know where to put them. I've got a load of them and they're already here on sixpackabs.com, but if you want more, just let me know. I'm happy to dish them out. 
And as always, make sure you're checking out that science-based six-pack program down in the description below. I'll see you in the next video.